Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are St. Louis. Life moves fast. Sometimes it feels like it moves faster every day, every hour, every second. But this week is a time when life slows down. This is opening week. Fans everywhere emerge from the dark days of winter to restore the bonds of loyalty and affection for their team. The start of a new season brings with it a sense of community and history that no other sport seems to capture. This is St. Louis. This is where baseball's legends come to life. Cardinals fans have perfected the art of honoring the players of the past while welcoming the players of the future. We remember the greatness that was Stan the Man, 1.12, and the flip. We anticipate the greatness to come. Dexter, Diaz, and Martinez. Today, it's fitting that a team with great tradition will start the season with one of the longest standing batteries in baseball history, Wainwright and Molina. And they'll be making their 218th career start together. They are living legends. Two of the best to ever wear the birds on the bat. Life is unpredictable. Life can be overwhelming. Life moves fast, whether you want it to or not. But life in St. Louis during opening week, well, that's the good life. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. It's opening week 2017. Tonight from Bush Stadium, it's the world champion Chicago Cubs playing in game number two against the St. Louis Cardinals on Fox Sports Midwest. Game one, the season opener here at Bush Stadium, Carlos Martinez was magnificent. Pitched into the eighth inning. Six hits allowed, no runs. He strikes out 10 with no walks. Martinez sensational in game one. It's great to be back. That's Tim McCarver. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jim Hayes is with us as well. We turn to our Toyota key to the game for Adam Wainwright, really for the pitching staff of the Cardinals, Tim. What do you expect from Adam tonight and also all season long from this staff? Well, nobody realizes it more than Mike Matheny that he's got to get his start, starting pitching straightened out. Adam Wainwright, one of the keys to those starters, and more than any other Cardinal pitcher, he's got to throw strike one to most Cub hitters because you fall behind a team that's the world champion Chicago Cubs and they can sit on one pitch and it spells trouble for any pitcher out there but particularly Adam Wainwright. Randall Gritchick is in the lineup tonight big game number one for him including a walk off hit it's the Yellowwood bringing the lumber.
game-winning hit and RBI that also included a home run. He wasn't only the uh, the Baseball's next. Thank you, Eugene. My uh, my mic was cutting out. I don't know what. Sunday, he went two for four with the game-winning hit. Also, some other outstanding debuts. Clayton Kershaw, seven innings, only two hits, and earned run for the Dodgers Sunday night. Madison Bumgarner, not only what he did on the mound, but at the plate, he hit two home runs. And, of course, Randall Gretchik, the two-run homer and a walk-off hit and a win for St. Louis. Baseball comes your way next.
Daniels, the home opener on Sunday, he went two for four with the game-winning hit. Also, some other outstanding debuts. Clayton Kershaw, seven innings, only two hits, an earned run for the Dodgers Sunday night. Madison Bumgarner, not only what he did on the mound, but at the plate, he hit two home runs. And, of course, Randall Gretchik, the two-run homer and a walk-off hit and a win for St. Louis. Baseball comes your way next. Brought to you by Bud Light, famous among friends. By Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest lasting full size pickups on the road. Find yours at your local Mid America Chevy dealer. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Well, partner, we're back at it again. That's Tim McCarver. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jim Hayes is here as well. Bush Stadium. Big crowd expected, and we're excited to go. It never gets old, does it? Nope. There's Jake Arrieta, a couple of years ago, the Cy Young Award winner for the Chicago Cubs, as he'll get the start tonight for the Cubbies. They went 103 and 58 a year ago, their first World Series title in 108 years. They beat the Giants, the Dodgers, and then a thrilling seven game series with the Indians. There's a look at Joe Madden. So in two years, with the Cubs, a 619 winning percentage. He's guided the Cubs to the NLCS in 2015 and the World Series a year ago. And you talk about a guy who does it his way, Joe Madden, very unconventional in the way he handles his players. He's their friend, he's their father. A lot of images of Joe Madden and the way he handles the Chicago Cub players. Live look at Adam Wainwright gets the call tonight for St. Louis. Mike Matheny, it's been a pretty amazing run for him. Now in year six at the helm of the Cardinals, every year in postseason play except last year as they were eliminated on the final day of the regular season. I remember a line years ago where it said that a good manager is someone who makes you forget who managed before him. Well, that's not the case with Mike Matheny because no St. Louis Cardinal fan is going to forget Tony La Russa. But Mike Matheny has done an extraordinary job in his five years with the Birds. Take a look at a very good Chicago Cubs lineup. Kyle Schwarber will lead it off, followed by Chris Bryant, then Anthony Rizzo, Addison Russell, young shortstop batting cleanup, Wilson Contreras, Jason Hayward, Javier Baez, the pitcher batting eighth, Jake Arrieta, and Albert Almora Jr., the center fielder batting ninth. 
Adam Wainwright a year ago 13 and 9 career high ERA 4.62 he was two innings shy of 200 for the year and we'll see what he's got here in 2017 Dan tied with uh, Dizzy Dean the Hall of Famer with 134 wins with the Cardinals and for the most part throughout his career he's won about two out of every three starts he's made Pretty good. yeah bet. both these teams first innings could be problematic for the pitchers I mean you look at the Cardinals they've got a very good one two three on base percentage guys that take a lot of pitches go deep into counts and you look at the Cubs Schwarber Bryant Rizzo that's a tough trio to get through in the first inning you can't stress enough the first pitch for Wainwright to all the Cub hitters is going to be the most important thing and you build from there around the horn presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers first pitch to Schwarber is taken for a ball. Schwarber last year injured in Arizona tore up a couple ligaments in his knee and then all of a sudden he arrived in the World Series and performed quite well when seven for 17 is the DH one ball one strike Sunday night a couple of hits reach base three times you mentioned how Joe Madden will do things a little differently and I think some look at this as being I don't know if strange is the right word, but a power guy like Schwarber batting yeah. leadoff. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Of course, he's a power guy, but he's an on-base percentage guy who is faster than he looks. A linebacker in high school, but he made the right decision when he went to the University of Indiana. The number four pick by the Cubs several years ago. He can hit. Outfield is deep, straight away. One ball, two strikes on Kyle Schwarber. The next by Wainwright. We had the tease to start our telecast talking about all the starts between these two, Wainwright and Molina together. They are now closing in on 24,000 pitches. Think about that. Molina has been behind the plate for nearly 24,000 of those pitches from Adam Wainwright. Miss with that cutter on the outside, the backdoor cutter. Wayno refers to that pitch. Schwarber not biting. And the 3 2. Ripped foul. For the longest time it was my partner and Bob Gibson all time list in terms of battery in Cardinals history and then passed last year by Wainwright and Molina. This is start number two hundred and eighteen together. A three two again and it's a lead off walk. Last season, 434 the batting average against on the first pitch. Something to keep in mind as Chris Bryant, the reigning MVP, digs in. But nothing should deter Wainwright from pitching, going right after hitters with strike one like that. Nothing should deter that. Because if he falls behind, Adam Wainwright 10 years ago had enough stuff to come back against good major league hitters. But right now he'll be 36 years old this year. Doesn't have the fastball that he once had or the biting breaking ball that he once had. So he's a different pitcher now. The 0 one in the dirt kept in front by Molina. <laughs> Yachty stepping on that to make sure. Get looked back like, here. Looks like he was planning something there. <laughs> kind of tapping it lightly with his left foot. <laughs> one ball one strike on Bryant popped 39 home runs a year ago drove in 102 short lead at first by Schwarber off the end of the bat into shallow center coming on Fowler and he makes the catch off the end of the bat. And that is really a catcher and a pitcher's 
way to go after hitters. Keep the ball off the fat part of the bat, and they've done their job. You can't worry about little flares that are going the opposite direction. Keep the ball off the fat part of the bat, and that's what Wayno did with Chris Bryant. You know, Timmy, you think about trades for various franchises and how they could change the fortunes of a franchise. Adam Wainwright closes out the 06 World Series in a great deal with the Atlanta Braves. The beginning of the rebuild for the Chicago Cubs was Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer going out and getting this man, Anthony Rizzo, from San Diego. They originally drafted him with Boston. He was traded to San Diego and then got off to a horrible start. He had 18 hits and 153 at bats. They felt, well, maybe this isn't the player we thought we got. And the Cubs jumped on that. They traded Andrew Kashner for Anthony Rizzo, and what a deal it's been. Oof. So Bryant was the MVP. Rizzo was fourth in the MVP race a year ago. The shift on the infield. Rizzo, as most baseball fans know, particularly after last year's World Series, stands right on top of the plate. He's a tough hitter to get inside on. But of course, he takes the outside part of the plate away. That's in his wheelhouse. So you got to come inside sometimes. Good curveball there. Wainwright in spring training said he was really at the beginning of spring feeling for the grip on the breaking ball and started flipping a baseball at night to his wife to get a, a feel of this pitch. That's a good one. That's a good well gripped fast uh, or curveball. <laughs> Here's a one two in the air. Got in on him. Bridget coming on. Two down. It's always good policy for a catcher in calling the game after a breaking ball something that slows down the bat that's when you want to pop them inside so curveball fastball inside has always been a great combination that's what Wayno and Molina did after the curveball came inside to Rizzo well for Adam Wainwright is he'll face now Addison Russell first time since 2012 that he has not pitched in the opener that went to Carlos Martinez we talked about him in the open sensational on Sunday night. Two outs and a runner at first. Chicago Cubs played the Houston Astros a couple of games last week, and I noticed watching Russell something that I had never noticed before. His right pinky is actually on top of his left index finger. It's it's actually an interconnected grip. It's almost like a golf swing. Yeah. And and I was talking to Addison about that on Sunday night. He said KB does it also Chris Bryant. I, I, I didn't know that. But it helps clear the hands through the ball and that's what you want. You want to make contact with the ball out in front. That's why he hit all those home runs last year. At 21 a year ago. Two balls and no strikes. It's hard to believe Addison Russell is only 23. And already two full years at the big leagues on a very good championship club. Tougher to break in for a championship club you also. Bet. Here's a guy subjected, I say subjected, to the World Series and postseason play and all that pressure last year, the age of 22. You know a thing or two about that. <laughs> you were a young man in that first championship. Yeah. Turned 23 the day after that series against the Yankees in 64. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> you can bring that up anytime you want, partner. I bet. <laughs> Here's a 2 1. Good pitch, 2 and 2. You got a check swing back inside. It's a small sample, but you got to love the way Wainwright's going about it in the first inning. Four for seven, Russell against the Cardinals starter tonight. Count is even, two balls, two strikes. Schwarber, your runner at first.
Now Schwarber off with his next pitch with two outs. Yeah, the Cubs aren't going to run much anyway. And that's one of the things that Joe Madden said too in putting Schwarber at the top of the lineup. We're not going to run anyway, so mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. do some damage in the first. Three two pitch. Popped up again. This time on the infield. Peralta is there. After a leadoff walk. The Cubs go in order. Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first here at Bush. The Cub fans that are here at Bush Stadium. That's Dexter Fowler wearing number 25. He'll lead it off, followed by Alet Miss Diaz, and then Matt Carpenter, Johnny Peralta batting cleanup, Yadier Molina, Steven Piscotti, Randall Gritchett, Colton Wong, and Adam Wainwright. Tough test tonight for these hitters as Jake Arietta gets the call for the Chicago Cubs. We say it was a down year for him. Yeah, right. 18 <laughs> and 8. Some down year with wow. an arm run average a little over three. Two years ago, the Cy Young Award winner, 22 and 6. Two years ago. First pitch to Fowler is taken for a ball. Here's a guy who played about 290 feet away from him last year, behind him defensively, and now he's 60 feet six inches away. <laughs> Seeing an old buddy. Yeah. Here's a 1 0. Talking with Dexter today in the clubhouse, and I said, When did you learn to switch hit? And he said, I was in the farm system of the Colorado Rockies, and I was messing around. During batting practice in a cage, he said, I started just swinging the bat left handed. I'm a natural right handed hitter. Mm -hmm. The farm director of the Rockies saw that and said, Next day, you are a switch hitter. Start to learn it right now. How about that? So he picked it up and he said, I was a switch hitter in the big leagues within two and a half years. Think about how hard that is to switch hit and then to make that jump that quickly to the big leagues to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. The 2 2 pitch. This is what we're going to be saying a lot of this year. 3 and 2 the count on Dexter Fowler. Loves to go deep into counts. Mm -hmm. 
slapped foul and out of play. You could see that unusual style. He puts the bat on his left shoulder, and as the pitcher is on his way with the ball, he'll take it off, of course. That's his trigger. It doesn't go back, it comes off the shoulder. That's how he gets ready to hit with authority. 3 2 again. And he struck him out. I think Derek thought that ball was low. It appeared to be high enough. Umpire's trying to lift that strike zone this year a little bit. Boy, I don't I don't think Jake Arietta's going to get a lot of pitches like that to National League hitters this year. Brian Onora is the home plate umpire, and here's Aled Miss Diaz. Arietta, we've talked about this in the past. When he was with the Baltimore Orioles, ditched what they were trying to, to get him to do, to be more of a traditional pitcher in terms of his delivery to the plate. He ditched that. Because he threw he throws across his body. That's his natural style. It's like trying to it's like trying to uh, change Jim Fury as a golfer. Exactly. He started off with a with a, a unique swing when he was seven years old. His father was a golf teacher. He said, keep it. It's sharply to short, taken there by Russell. That ball was smoked by Diaz. But again, that's the advantage of a pitcher getting ahead. He fall behind, fell behind Diaz. And Aledman's got his fastball, hit it hard, but right at Russell. It's a lot tougher to pick up a guy who throws across his body than it is a guy who clears that front foot and throws it more in a conventional fashion. Well, these two are, are very close. Former teammates at TCU, Matt Carpenter, Jake Arietta. And Arietta has had the best of Carpenter in his career. Matt, regular season, 0 for 24 with eight strikeouts. Goodness. The postseason of two years ago went one for three with a single in the division series against the Cubs and Arietta. TCU, of course, Texas Christian University, and Arietta is not handling Matt Carpenter in a Christian like fashion. <laughs> 0 for 24. With your vast knowledge of the game of baseball, I'm sure you're going to explain to me what a horned frog is, too. No, I will not. <laughs> I can kind of make it up in my own mind. <laughs> we could do it uh, off mic. Well, you but can tell us straight. <laughs> no, no. I'd be scared to see what you'd put up on that screen. Horn Frog, I guess, would be native to that particular part of Texas. Here's a 2 1 pitch to Carpenter. Fouled back. That was hittable. The Cubs defensively Schwarber in left, Almora in center, Hayward in right, Bryant Russell on the left side, Baez Rizzo on the right side of the infield, and Wilson Contreras is behind the plate. The 2 2. And a swing and a miss. Now 0 for 25 in regular season play. So Arietta strikes out a couple. Wainwright back to work. Fowler, he caught him looking. And Carpenter swung through this fastball. No score after one. From Bush Stadium.
Cubs and the Cardinals on Fox Sports Midwest. Wilson Contreras, Jason Hayward, and Javier Baez for Chicago as Contreras bunts it foul for strike one. Contreras was almost in fair territory when that ball hit him. Very close. So it took that one and a half steps toward first base. Obviously, when that happens, you're out. Home plate umpire Brian Onora said, well, he was still in the box, but this is close. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Be an interesting year to see the development of Contreras. A lot of fire to his game, a lot of energy and passion. David Ross retired. He's now on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and that's great, isn't it? It is. It's it, fun. It really is. It's fun. Miguel Montero, he's going to split a little time with him, too. But I get your drift. I think David Ross uh, was certainly an influence on the young Contreras. There was a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal. The cutter, the curve. He's been working on a changeup, fastball. Two and two the count on Contreras. And he struck him out. First strikeout of the year for Adam Wainwright. You can imagine Contreras going up never having faced Wayne Wright or maybe a handful of times saying look for the curveball look for the curveball and what does Wayne Wright Molina do fastball on the corner. Welcome back Jason Hayward. You told me something before the game that I was unaware of partner. You said that Jason Hayward is the highest paid player on the Cubs. Position player, that's Position right. Position player, yeah. Remarkable. Hayward last year hit 230, seven home runs, drove in 49. So Hayward left St. Louis, signed with Chicago, and Fowler, the first Cub to sign as a free agent with St. Louis since all the way back in 2005, and that was Mark Redzelonic. It was a very good second baseman sure. for a number of years with Montreal then Chicago and St. Louis. I want you to as we go along in this game and maybe we'll have a chance to break it down even further but take a look at what Hayward is trying to do he has overhauled his swing completely. I you know I asked him about that on Sunday he said uh, that got a lot of press but I didn't do that. He told me that. Around the batting cage, he said, "You know what I have done? Relax my hands." So I, I don't think that is one of those things that's considered a, a overhaul of the of the swing. But a lot of Cardinal fans saw him when he was with St. Louis. I mean, 0-2 pitches he'd swing at like they were two and zero. Two and two, but he he talked about Ted Williams and Ted Williams. Saying that the hand should be relaxed enough where someone could come and lift the bat out of the hands, which is what Williams' approach was. I mean, you firm up when you make contact, but not before that. Otherwise, you're expending too much energy early. What you want to do is have all the energy expended, if that's the word, on contact. And you can't do that if your hands are tight. 3 2 pitch and it's popped foul and out of play. What those around the Cubs have raved about with Jason Hayward is the fact that he's tried to address this. He understands it was a brutal year and he's got to get it right. Just think about what kind of year it would have been deemed oh. had the Cubs not won the World Series. How much heat, by the way, would Joe Madden be on? Oh, yeah. With some right. of the moves that he made. Right. Amen to that. But they won. End of story. 3 2 pitch. So Jason was saying before the game that he actually went to Cabo after the World Series for five days, took a five day vacation, went to Cabo, and then went right back to the minor league facility with the Cubs in Arizona and started working on and readjusting the hands and the swing and working hard. That's the same swing we've seen for the yep. last three years. I agree. In game one, and so far in this at bat. The 3 2 pitch, Hayward, little bouncer to second base. 
Colton Wong is there. Two down. What we saw a lot with Jason Hayward and in his final year in Atlanta is this rolling over and a lot of ground balls to second base. A lot of four threes. Matter of fact, that's what Chip Carey told us. Our buddy from who does the Atlanta Braves, they're moving into new SunTrust Field in Atlanta this year. But he said, uh, expect to see a lot of four threes from Jason Hayward. You hate to get that tag, but that's exactly uh, what he did for the Cardinals. A lot of ground balls to second base. So two outs and nobody on, and Javi Baez, the hitter. And it's nothing at two. Make him chase now. First 0 2 count that Wainwright has had. You get a young hitter like that who doesn't know the strike zone. Make him go out of the strike zone to beat you. That was the knock on Baez. Remember, we were doing a game at Wrigley Field. Uh, two years ago and we started looking at the numbers in the minor leagues and then early on in his big league career the amount of strikeouts didn't and, know the strike zone you exactly. know overly aggressive yeah you know oh yeah. two he'll chase Wants one to and do two too much Molina sets up outside the one two misses and while it may have been an up and down season a year ago for Adam Wainwright his ERA at Bush Stadium was three runs better at home than it was on the road a season ago. Gave up only four home runs in this ballpark. Got him to chase. Pitch in the dirt. Second strikeout of the night for Adam Wainwright. His first strikeout, Wilson Contreras, throws it. Two of them so far for big number 50. No score midway through two. Lynn and John Lackey and it wouldn't be Cardinal baseball without Jim Hayes he's back again and Jimmy how about Lance Lynn he's a free agent to be yeah with uh, the Cardinals announcing a couple of extensions over the past few days and Lance Lynn in the final year of his contract an obvious question for Lance how do you see your future with the Cardinals Lance Lynn told me this I'd love to be a Cardinal for life but I understand the guys who got extensions were healthy last year he said quote you have to show you can play before they pay. That's the rumor I hear. Lance says he hopes to hear something from the Cardinals around midseason. He said, I'm open to anything. This is my home. 
Dan as you know Lance coming off Tommy John surgery he gets a start tomorrow. So Lynn goes tomorrow Johnny Peralta at the plate no balls and two strikes. And a swing and a miss you know Jim there was a lot of talk about Colt Wong. And there's a look at Phil Nichols the outstanding cameraman that's been with us for years. I have a story on him in a moment but Colton Wong a lot of comments about you know not maybe being an everyday player that was uh, talked about a lot. Did you have a chance to visit with Colton today about that. Yeah he told me the whole controversy over his comments in regard to platooning long forgotten in his mind he says his real meaning never really got out but he said he talked to his teammates and everything is fine. He told me my teammates understand the kind of player I am and that I'm a competitor and I want to be out there Dan. He says he's done talking about it. Time to play. All right. Thank you Jimmy. Now Phil Nichols a longtime cameraman at the Fox seminar this year Tim. Phil received the Doug Sellers Award and it's given to one person. And it's when he or she goes above and beyond the call of duty. Pretty, and pretty prestigious award. It is. And Phil received that award. He is a hard, hard worker. You see him running all over the field if you're at the ballpark and get some of our great shots like that one from behind home plate. And congratulations to one of the good guys, Phil Nichols. They're some of the great athletes in our business. Is the, the guys who lug that camera around weighs about what 80 pounds or you something like that. You better be in that. shape. You better be in shape. And a strike to Stephen Piscotti. So congratulations to Phil and well deserved. Piscotti inking an extension yesterday. Here's a 1 1. And I asked him, I said, Well, you're going to spoil yourself in the uh, clubhouse today? And he said, Yeah, I did. I said, What'd you get? He said, I, I bought a phone case for my phone and it was on clearance. <laughs> Way to go out there and really uh, extend yourself. As Arietta is locked in, he has seen six and struck out four. We head to the third. The Cubs, the Cardinals, game two on Fox Sports Midwest. Brunchfest menu. It's brunch time anytime at Jack in the Box. Buy steel outdoor power equipment. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search S T I H L. And by Ford, official cars and trucks of the Cardinals. 
Here's Jake Arietta. The pitcher is batting eighth. Yeah, we go from Jack in the box to Jake in the box. <laughs> batting Only eighth. Only you would think of that. Well, kind of weird. <laughs> the 0 1. Arietta, little flare out to left and a base hit. First hit for either side. It's like a curveball hit off the end of the bat. And Arietta, a good enough hitter to hit eighth, but his counterpart is a good enough hitter to hit eighth also, and that's Adam Wainwright. He's batting ninth in this game. Had an interesting conversation with a, a front office uh, personnel member. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you what do you think about the pitcher batting eighth? Where, where do you guys go with this? And he, it was really interesting how he put it as you get a look at Albert Almora Jr. He said you have to think of it in terms of looking at an entire score sheet that you're going to get 36 to 40 at bats. So don't look at it one through nine immediately. Look at the entire one through 40. Let's say you get 36 to 40 at bats in a game is what they're assuming. OK. And then at that point you start thinking about the pinch hitting. Right. How deep somebody goes. Right. All those factors come into it. And they said it's really not the worst thing to have that happen. That is a fair ball and out at second base as they do get the lead. Man. That was a very good play by Peralta who fielded that ball before it had any chance to go foul. Looked like it was right down the line a fair ball and going to second base to get Arietta the lead runner it's not hit hard right on the line good throw but too much to do to get Almora by Wong and we're back to the top of the lineup in Kyle Schorber we talked about it and that was our key to the game first pitch strikes for Adam Wainwright he's thrown seven to nine hitters so far. So one out and a runner at first as Schwarber hits a fly ball out to center. Fowler backing up on the edge of the track makes the catch. Almora thought about tagging up and there's two down. That's a good point Dan because Almora didn't have that much time. That's how hard that ball was hit in the summer. That ball's out of here. But it's an it's an April line drive and they good don't point. carry. Good point. Hit hard, but Fowler with a good jump. I'll tell you, I, that ball was hit so hard that Almora didn't have a chance to react to get back to first. I agree. And watching it happen too, you could see it almost in between yeah. and then realized I gotta get back. Right. Now it's Bryant with two outs and a runner at first. One thing I noticed in spring, and I, I want to ask Dexter about this, but his philosophy on where he likes to play defensively in center, and I noticed in spring training he plays a pretty deep center field. Mm -hmm. If he's playing in, he doesn't get to that ball. No. Near the top of the arch that's cut in the grass here in St. Louis. Bryant fly to center his first time up. Out to right. Piscotti plenty of room. And he puts it away. Three scoreless put up by Adam Wainwright. Richard Wong Wainwright coming up. And a nice play and a good jump by Dexter Fowler in center and a long fly out off the bat of Schwarber. No score here in St. Louis.
frozen drinks any size. 50 cents the next day at On the Run when the Redbirds score six. So keep the celebration going. Stop by On the Run tomorrow for a thirst quenching win. You earned it. Here's Randall Gritchick. He'll lead it off. We're in the bottom of the third. Arietta has struck out four of the six that he's seen. Interesting conversation with Randall, he said, before the game to me in the clubhouse. He said, you know, it's great to have the hits and get that first one under your belt. He said, I don't care if it's Little League or even now. I just want the first hit out of the way. But he said, I was able to fight back falling behind 0-2. Mm -hmm. And I've got to be able to do that at this level. We also talked about Arietta and how tough he is on right-handers. Pedro Strope was the pitcher, and it was really a cookie after going 0-2 with that slider of Strope's. Just uh, wonder how you can make a mistake like that. You make a mistake in the middle of the plate to Gritchick, and like most major league hitters, those are cookies. Randall also said he went and looked at video of Jake Arrieta. And I bring that up because I'm sure a lot of people at home are saying, well, every player nowadays looks right. at video. He's one of the few that doesn't. Randall Gritchick, he said, but I, I wanted to see a couple of times how Arietta approached me last year, but for the most part, I'm not a guy that likes to look at video before a game. I want to watch the pitcher as the game develops. The 2 2. And he struck him out. Contreras has to fire to first. Arietta's so five now. Arietta's uh, gotten a lot of mileage out of that fastball thus far. He struck out Piscotti, the ball up and in. He struck out Gritchick, the ball up and in, dropped by Contreras. Completes the play at first base. So five of the seven Cardinal hitters have been struck out by Jake Arietta. Now Colton Wong. Wong to second, sliding forward by Eggs. Just got one. Well, one of the things we saw in the World Series, the great glove work of Javi Baez, some of the best hands we've seen in a long, long time. Well, and if he if, if he doesn't make the play, he's got the arm to back it up. He's got a shortstop's arm at second base. One of the new rules that is being used by Major League Baseball this year. If Mike Matheny wanted to challenge that he could put his hand up to the umpire and then they have 30 seconds to decide whether or not they want to challenge or keep play going. So they mm -hmm. took a quick look at it and said let's go. The strike to Wainwright. Little defensive swing that time. Arietta is over, flips to first. And a one, two, three for Jake Arietta. Section 166 here at the ballpark. And there's no score.
Divided into Krispy Kreme tomorrow. Receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts for only $3.99. Stop by one of the four St. Louis area Krispy Kreme locations or the locations in Bloomington or Springfield, Illinois for this sensational deal. For the most part, Tim, it was an uneventful camp, but the first day of camp, Alex Reyes goes down with Tommy John, and that's a huge loss. Yes, it really was. The Cardinals were not sure exactly how they were going to approach the way in which they would use Reyes. Would it be at the bullpen initially and then move to the rotation? Yeah, because you've got five solid starters. Exactly. And I know you had the chance to talk to Trevor Rosenthal today, so he's getting closer to returning. Yes, he is. That right lat, which is right under the right armpit. And uh, he was thinking about throwing long toss today, which is a sure sign that, uh, particularly a lat problem like that, that it's getting much, much better. Anthony Rizzo at the plate, fly to left, first time up, 0 for 1 tonight. Wayne Wright is allowed one base hit as Rizzo goes down to get it and hits it into right. That's an, Scotty. That's an Adrian Beltre swing. Drop it to his uh, knee. Drop it to his knee. Those who watch the American League and the Texas Rangers, the future Hall of Famer Adrian Beltre drops to that right knee as a right-handed batter, and here Rizzo dropping down. We don't. I'll tell you, that's a sure sign. That Wainwright's curveball was down and good. It brings in Addison Russell. Strike one. You gotta love the way Wainwright is pitched to Rizzo. He jammed him with a high fastball and then got him on that good curve. Line drive into right. That ball will get down. Russell is thinking too. Cut off by Fowler. Addison Russell in safely standing up with a one out double. That was an inside fastball that Russell probably went up and said you know what I'm going to try to hit the ball back through the middle or hit the ball the other way this ball's inside inside part of the plate that he hit to right center field. He's an improved player and I think he will be. The big reason if the Cubs do win this year, I think Addison Russell is going to have a great year. I really do. Now Contreras struck out looking his first time up. So one out runner at second. Contreras, a couple of years ago, they shifted him to catcher. And his career just took off. At one point, he was exposed. He, anybody could have had him. Yeah. And the Cubs kept him, moved him to catcher. He has an absolute cannon for an arm. And now will be the primary catcher as he caught John Lester the other night and has Jake Arietta here this evening. Around about that same time, anybody could have had a Ledmus Diaz right. of the Cardinals for nothing. Same with Contreras. And they just blossomed at the same time. The 1 1. Arietta and Contreras, this is their sixth start together. And Wainwright and Molina closing in on 220 together. If Adam Wainwright makes 30 starts this year and Molina is behind there for 30 of them, they will be in the top 10 all time. In baseball history, that combination. Wow. The 2 1. Even though there's a left handed batter on deck, I think Wainwright and Molina, they may not go to the fastball right here. I mean, Wainwright's got such good control with his curveball. And then you get the curveball over, then you do anything you want 3 2. Breaking ball, three and two. Does he go back to it? I don't think so. I think once you get the breaking ball over, when you're behind in the count, you've reestablished the fact that you can throw the fastball, particularly to a young hitter. Use your experience. 
Runner at second is Addison Russell. Now when, time is called. Wainwright was shaking Molina off. Sometimes pitchers will continue to stare at the catcher, and now Molina wants to make sure. I certainly understand that. But by staring at the catcher, you don't shake your head no. You stare the sign off. I don't want that pitch. State Farm perfect pair Wainwright and Molina. Some great names on that list Gibson and McCarver Forsh and Ted Simmons most starts together Wainwright and Molina. The three two. And he walked him. So the second walk issued by Wainwright tonight. He's given up a couple of hits he struck out two runners at first and second and it brings in Hayward. Hayward last season hit 152 against the Cardinals. Rounded out to second his first time up. Some guys are low ball hitters. Some guys are high ball hitters. Some like it away. Some like it inside. With what we've seen from Jason Hayward throughout all his at bats he's a good low ball hitter. Fights it off Diaz going out and it drops. Russell being waved in the throw by Grichik not in time. And the Cubs strike first here in game two. That's a bad play by Grichik. Little flare there's no way to protect against a ball hit like that. But that ball's got to go to third base. Russell had too good a jump he's a fast runner. And the plays right in front of Randall. You can see Contreras round the bag. And he comes home and by coming home that allows Contreras to get to third base with less than two outs. Not a good play by Gritchick. So runners at first and third for Javi Baez. You can see the play unfolding if you're the left fielder. You know the speed of the runner at second base. You see whether he had a good jump or not. You see Contreras round the bag ready to go to third. And sure enough, on the throw home, he did. Peralta is guarding the line at third. Carpenter holding at first. Hayward is a threat to, uh, to run. Of course, Joe Madden loves to put on the safety squeeze in situations like this. First and third and one out. That burned the Cardinals in the LDS a couple of years ago against the Cubs. There, there it is. And Wainwright flips the play. Save. Contreras scores the second run. Well, what set this all, all up was Gritchie making the throw home, allowing Contreras to go to third base. And so far, the Cardinals have not shown that they know how to defend first and third on a safety squeeze. It's that simple. Here's the play. Gritchick sees Russell get a good jump. Now he sees Contreras round the bag. And that's the key. By seeing him round the bag, you don't go home, and here's the bunt to complete the play, and the Cubs score another run. You see the fire and the emotion there by Contreras brings a lot of energy to this club. Mm. Cardinals took a look at it. They will not challenge. 2 0 Chicago. Runners at first and second. One out, and it brings in Arietta, who singled to left his first time up. Now, time is called. I think Jake Arietta. Discovered that his bat was cracked. Sometimes that'll happen with that pine tar you put on bats. Sometimes you can't see the the hairline crack in the bat. Arietta this spring, it was measured at 460 feet a home run that he hit. He can swing the bat. No, he can. Five major league home runs. One in postseason last year. We talked about it earlier, Madison Bumgarner, the other day with. A pair of home runs in their opener. The last Cardinal pitcher to hit a home run in an opener was Joe McGrain back in 1988.
Runners at first and second. The outfield shading Arietta a little bit to right center. That's fouled back. 0 oh 2. Wainwright has done a pretty good job against a lefty so far in this lineup. His left handed batters a year ago hit 305 against him. No balls and two strikes on Jake Arietta. Slipped out of the hands of Wainwright. That's an You don't see that every day. I mean, my gosh. I haven't seen that in years. Now it looks like Wainwright and Molina may have gotten confused on the on the pitch that they were going to throw. But why would, if that were the case, why didn't Wainwright step off? Hmm. No idea. So the runners advance to second and third, one and two the count. Never seen that from Adam Wainwright. Never. Mm -hmm. No. Now you're forced to bring the infield in. And he struck him out. The ball that was two feet in front of the plate. It landed two feet in front of the plate. That was a, a 58 foot curveball from Wainwright. From a 38 footer to a 58 footer. <laughs> Arietta took the bait. Big out for Wainwright and the Cardinals. Albert Almora Jr. Runners at second and third. In the opener, it was Jason Hayward playing center field, and a lot of those folks that follow the Cubs are wondering, well, why is Joe Madden doing this? And his reasoning was it was to pay homage to those that played in Game 7 of the World Series. So he wanted to get those players in, and that's why he started Hayward in center. Almora and John Jay primarily will be the, uh, the players in center, depending on matchups. Almora is only 22. Two outs, second and third. And the 0-2. Gets away from Molina, but the runners stay put. Almora was 0 for 10 in the postseason, but scored the go-ahead run in game seven. You may recall he was a pinch runner for Kyle Schwarber. And he tagged up from first to second on a deep fly to center. An aggressive play, and it wound up being a series winning play. Scored the winning run, right? Yep. I'll tell you, if you're Hayward at third base, you come up the line. I mean, Molina's not going to throw behind you because Peralta's not going to not going to cover. And that way you give yourself every chance to come home on a on a wild pitch. Wainwright's been bouncing these. That's the point. Two and two the count. You can't take a conventional lead at third base, and that's what Hayward's doing. Now Mora is swinging a miss on a cutter. And a strikeout for Wainwright. He's fourth of the night, but the Cubs strike first. It's two-nothing midway through four.
fastball, the sinker, slider, curve, and change. And he's been on quite a run. Two no hitters, Cy Young Award in 2015. 64 starts the last two years. And he had two wins in the World Series run for Chicago a year ago. Here's Fowler. And that's ball one. Danny, I, I saved some scorecards score from uh, a couple of years ago when Arietta faced the Cardinals. And I have here that he retired the first nine batters five times. This is like in June because at the time his record was nine and five. Wow. And what's he done tonight? He's All retired nine. the first nine hitters he's faced. You talk about a guy who does it in bunches. He sets the tone too. Yes, he does. Born in Farmington, Missouri, grew up just outside Dallas, Texas. As he added his name to the Cy Young Award winners in Cubs history, Ferguson Jenkins, Bruce Souter, Rick Sutcliffe, Greg Maddox. Last year was St. Louis native and Washington National Max Scherzer won the award in the National League. Rick Porcello for Boston won it in the American League. Here's a 2-1. I've said this a lot. The Cardinals, when you look at Fowler, he's the perfect fit. Needed a leadoff man, needed a center fielder. Right, so you moved Richie to left. Better left fielder than center fielder. So it's a big plus for the Cardinals. It's a huge loss for the Cubs as Fowler hits it out to shallow left, and there's the first Cardinal hit. A 393 on base percentage a year ago. And you think about getting on base in front of Schwarber, Rizzo, Bryant. That's a big loss. Yeah, it is. Well, the Cardinals giving the Cubs a little bit of their own medicine as Rizzo smiling at his ex buddy. I guess they're still buddies, but they're opponents now. Now a lead miss Diaz. Lined out to short first time up. Even Anthony Rizzo after the game the other day and talking with the reporters that follow the Chicago Cubs said, I want to rip on you, Dex, but you look pretty good in that Cardinal red. I can't do it. You just wear it well. He's back in safely. The Cubs have planned a special afternoon to recognize Dexter Fowler when the Cardinals head to Wrigley for the first time. That will include the World Series ring, right? That's right. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Bouncer to third. Stop there by Bryant. Gets up, fires the first. Advancing on the play, Fowler to second, and a fine play there by Chris Bryant down at third. He makes a lot of fine plays. A guy who can play center field, left field, right field. And pick it at third. Short hop, good play, realizing his only play is at first base with Fowler speed and a good jump to second. So the hitter will be Matt Carpenter. Struck out swinging, first time up. You just wonder if the innings will pile up, if at all. On Jake Arietta, nearly 470 innings his last two years. Hefty workload for this day and age. As Carpenter hits it to Rizzo. Rizzo steps on the bag and Fowler advancing to third. And it brings in Johnny Peralta. So two outs, runner at third, tying run at the plate. For the better part of spring, it was Steven Piscotti batting in the cleanup spot. Did not have a very good spring. And the Cardinals, at least initially here early on, are going with Peralta to bat fourth. One thing to keep in mind, Jake Arrieta led the National League in wild pitches last year. If you're at third base, that ball in the dirt, Usually he has does not have control of that breaking ball. And if you can inch up the line 
Maybe score a cheap run. And Peralta looks at a ball 2 and 0. One thing if you're a catcher and you, you have a pitcher out there who's inclined to throw breaking balls in the dirt you can't stop calling. You can't let that determine how you're going to try to get the hitter out. Keep in mind Contreras a very young catcher does not have a full major league season behind home plate. The 2 0. How long do you think Tim it takes for a catcher and a pitcher to get on that same page. Well, it depends on how conscientious, how, how conscientious a catcher can be or a pitcher. The pitcher realizing that it would behoove him to get on the same page as quickly as possible. But a young catcher is going to make mistakes. Now a 2 1. Inside 3 and 1 Molina on deck. Peralta last year. Only 82 games hurt his hand in spring. He's now 34 years of age. Hit 260 with eight home runs. That injury opened the way for Ledmiss Diaz. Round ball backhanded by Bryant. So the Cardinals strand a runner. They do pick up their first hit by Dexter Fowler. When we come back, we'll take a look back at that crazy inning moments ago for Adam Wainwright. All right, Scotty, thank you. 2 nothing here. Cubs hit the uh, lead over Adam Wainwright and the Cardinals as we move to the top of the fifth and the top of the lineup. Schwarber, Bryant, and Rizzo for Chicago. Schwarber has walked and also fly to deep center. Uh, he was signed by Scott Zielinski, and Tim mentioned earlier a high draft pick, fourth overall in 2014 and he was asked the scout that signed him what was special about Schwarber and he said well he's a true freshman batting second and he said one thing you see a lot of times with young players or freshmen in college they don't hit at the top of the order and here they put the responsibility of being a second place hitter on him he said he's fearless loves the game 
And they loved his football background too. Linebacker in high school. He's got a linebacker's body. He sure does. But a hitter's hand. Now the 3 1. Good breaking ball, 3 and 2. Full count delivery. And Schwarber just got a piece to stay alive. We saw in between innings Mike Matheny talking with the home plate umpire. We weren't sure exactly what they were talking about. Major League Baseball announced the retirement of four longtime umpires. That's Brian Onora there. But Bob Davidson no longer. In Major League Baseball, John Hirschbeck, Jim Joyce, a great one, Tim Welke, all have retired. Got the outside corner and a strikeout of Schwarber. Schwarber thought that ball was outside, and that is a design pitch, a cutter on the outside part. Here's that look at that crazy inning. Gritchick's throw home, allowing Contreras to go to third. And then Wainwright tried to shuffle it off to Molina, laid it home. That scored the second run. That was from the stretch. That ball getting away from Molina, but it was a wacky inning for the Cardinals. Now Chris Bryant, 0 for 2. He's fly to center and also flied out to right. So after an inning like that, you get together with your catcher. That's what. Adam Wainwright did there and Derek Lilliquist, the Cardinals pitching coach. I don't think I've ever seen those two. It's, it's as close to an argument as they would ever have. They, they, they are dear friends, both of them. But of course, you, you know, when you suit it up, you want to get things straight. But I don't think I've, I've seen them in that if the word is vociferous. Not that not that either were, were angry, I don't think. But uh, it was. Out in the open for everybody to see. A 3 0 pitch. 3 and 1. So last year, Bryant is the MVP. Anthony Rizzo, fourth in the ballot. John Lester was second in the Cy Young. Kyle Hendricks, third, and he won the ERA title. Everything that went right for them had to go right, and it did. 3 and 2. Kyle Hendricks, uh, here he is leading the majors in, <laughs> in earn run average. And he will not start any of these three games. There's that over at pinky of the left hand on the on the index finger. Comes back to get him and strikes him out. It doesn't matter how you hold the bat if you're going to take strike three. Looked like Bryant was looking for something off speed. Sure was. That's now four strikeouts in a row and six tonight total for Wainwright. Two outs and it brings in Rizzo. He's flied to left and flied out to right. There's strike one. Good change up a pitch that Wainwright was working on at spring training. I'll tell you, he's looked sharp tonight. I don't sure think has. I don't think Mike Matheny's going to be disappointed with this. Approach so far. Oh, one Rizzo looking at the shift and bunts it foul. Nothing in two. No, I, I don't buy that. Not with two outs. If they're none or one out. You know, you take it if they give it to you. But with Peralta in the the Cardinal infield shifted around to the right, so you bunt and get a base hit. So what? You're on first base with two outs. Not for a guy like Rizzo. I mean, to me, you got to go for an extra base hit here. The 0 2. On the ground, backhanded there by Carpenter. A flip to Wainwright and a 1 2 3. Top of five for Adam Wainwright. The Cubs, the Cardinals on Fox Sports Midwest in a beautiful night for baseball.
in this inning. Jim, let's check back in with you. Steven, a happy man with a brand new contract extension. Yeah, after what appeared to be a lost spring training for Steven Biscotti, hit just 151, but he's a Stanford guy and he sees a little bit more than, say, a Geneseo State product. Piscotti told me at spring training, from a results standpoint, it was awful, but he said he learned a lot about his swing. He needed time to work some things out. Specifically, he said he was trying to stay on his backside. He said that gives him more time to see a pitch and react to it. Dan Piscotti said his contact point was way off kilter during spring training because for years he was lunging at the ball. So now he's workshopping it, Dan. And Jimmy, uh, he talked to both of us about having financial stability, relaxing. And obviously very, very happy to have this done. And Dan, you know him. He is an even keel guy. He yeah. said from a personal standpoint, this change is nothing. You know, he is financially set now, set for life, so it's a win for him. And, you know, the Cardinals get that cost certainty, which is important to them. Win-win. Jimmy, thanks. Uh, they have locked up now Piscotti and Molina, Carlos Martinez, Dexter Fowler, Brett Cecil. That pitch taken just a bit high, two and nothing to count. He Colton struck out Wong his first last time year. Up. Colton Wong Tried. last year. Wong in the first year of a five year extension. And the 2 0 pitch. Popped up. Left side. Russell over foul territory near the stands reaching in. Did he get it. No. Whenever you have a play that's close to the wall and you're running over there what. Coaches tell you to do is to get to the wall and then back off. You know where the, the wall's not going to move. So you get to the wall and then back off if you have to. That was a tough play, no question about it. And a good try by Russell. But Piscotti with new life. The 2 1. Well, Piscotti talked about getting the uh, phone guard. Clearance sale, of course, his first purchase after the big contract, and he said, "You know, the other thing I'll probably do is, is buy a house." He's actually living with his parents in the off season in California. That's a little more expensive. <laughs> and now he's hit by the pitch. Well, you mentioned it. Arietta times can get a little wild. I think that ball got more than the uniform initially I thought it just grazed him but I think it. Uh, plucked Steven. If not full board got more of his body than I thought initially. Ball backed up. No it was his arm. Inside the right arm. Yeah inside the right uh, elbow. It's not the back of the arm. The back of the arm is where that nerve center is right there. Boy, those things are killers. Krispy Kreme does a deal. Cardinals get nine hits tonight. You're invited into Krispy Kreme tomorrow. Receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts for only $3.99. Krispy Kreme. So Piscotti hit by the pitch, and it brings in Randall Gritchick. Struck out back in the third. Arietta struck out five. Struck out five of the first seven that he saw in this game. Cubs will have to make a decision on Jake Arrieta. He is a free agent to be. Strike one to Gritchick. Well, if the Cubs elect to allow him, <laughs> him to walk, uh, he will have quite a few suitors, one would think. Very few pitchers take as good care of themselves as Arietta. Kubota power stats with Randall Gritchick at the plate. 
225 home runs hit by the Cardinals a year ago. Second most in franchise history. That's right. The 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One Randall's looking for a breaking ball. He's gotten three fastballs from Marietta. We mentioned earlier Randall a much better fastball hitter is prone to go out of the strike zone on breaking balls with two strikes. Contreras wants it elevated the one two ripped down the third base line and foul. So the Cardinals, we saw the departure of Matt Holliday. He's now with the Yankees. We'll see him on our first road trip. He had 20 home runs. Brandon Moss with Kansas City now. He had 28. Jeremy Hazelbaker with Arizona. He had 12. So that's 60 gone from that total of a year ago. The one two. Got him out in front off the end of the bat hit into shallow left Schwarber called off by Almora and back to the bag at first goes Piscotti. Adam Wainwright is on deck so the Cardinals have Matt Bowman up just in case that spot comes up you might only get a crack or two at Jake Arrieta. Matter of fact, Matt Adams has come out. Looks like he will be the pinch hitter if the number nine hole comes up there. There's Ball that. gets away. Piscotti to second, and he's hit again. That's excellent base running by Stephen Piscotti. We talked about the wild pitches. Arietta leading the National League in wild pitches last year was 16. And usually it comes on the breaking ball in the dirt. Good base running by Piscotti. Well, the Cardinals tonight are 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. They were 0 for 11 in game one until the game winning hit by Randall Gritchick. So Piscotti, about five minute stretch, getting beat up. Here's a 1 0. And Wong looks at a strike, grounded out to second, and Javi Baez, his first time up. Mention how everything went right for the Cubs a year ago. Their rotation had a better ERA in their bullpen. The last World Championship team to have that, you have to go back to 2003. And Tim, it was every guy making their start. You know, every fifth day, there weren't injuries. Stars aligned for Chicago in a very talented group. Little chopper slowly hit right side. Wong may beat it out. He does. Ball gets away. Here comes Piscotti. He is saved as the ball hit him in the head, maybe the face. Wong to second, and Piscotti is down. Anthony the Rizzo get on the board, and Rizzo down there immediately. Anthony Rizzo showing very good sportsmanship right there, but I mean. Steven Piscotti hit by a pitch. Excellent base running to go to second and now home. And then the ball thrown by Rizzo hits Piscotti. Thank God he had the helmet on with the flap because that's where it hit the ear flap. Boy, that's a tough time around the bases. That's one way to put it. He's been hit on both elbows and now looked to be the flap of the helmet. It looked to me to be, yeah. Showing, yeah showing it on the Cardinal board in right center field. 
and then a collective groan. That's really nice from Rizzo. I mean, he's a classy guy. Give him the hand and all that. Coming up, first guy there. And all the Cubs applauding to Scotty now that he's up. Wow. Thank goodness for that flap. You're right. I mean that throw from first base realizing that you got to make a strong throw if you have any chance to get him trying to score so it was full bore on the throw by Rizzo and Steven appears to be all right as he scores the first Cardinal run. I heard an you. exquisite way of going around the bases base running was superb. I was just about to say I've heard you harp on base running or lack thereof for many years now. I mean, Steven Piscotti generated that run. Excellent. Superb base runner. And so now the tying run is in scoring position. That's Colton Wong. That's a base hit, an infield hit for Wong. Cardinals will pinch hit for Matt Adams. Or with Matt Adams, I should say, for Wainwright. I don't, I don't see how that is a an RBI for Wong right no RBI, no RBI. And an error on uh, Rizzo right. Certainly the advantage of speed going down to first base. This was an area of strength for the Cardinals a year ago Adams a 330 pinch hitter last year first in baseball had three pinch hit home runs and drove in 13 and he's coming off a very good spring. Seven for 22 in his career against Arietta. The Cardinals, as a team a year ago, hit 333 in the pinch. Adams yanks it down the right field line. Season ago, defined by the long ball in many ways. 17 home runs hit by nine different players for the Cardinals. Goodness. Wow. The 1 1. Much has been made of Matt Adams and the body type as he's Looks dropped about 30 pounds. It, absolutely. To his credit, was overweight, took care of it. Now trying to maintain. He'll feel better and be better if he does. I wonder if the Cardinals are entertaining the idea of Adams going to the outfield if Piscotty's out. Maybe. Keep him in the game. He wouldn't go to right field, but he'd go to left field and have Gritchick go to right. But that is a possibility. Not trying to get ahead of ourselves, but certainly a within the realm of possibility. The tying run at second base. Two outs, one ball, two strikes on Adams. Slowly hit. And a foul ball. Two and two the count. That was one of those situations where the home plate umpire called it foul, a first base umpire called it fair. But it was the home plate umpire's call because it had not yet reached first base. Foul ball. The 2 2. Good at bat here by Adams. 3 and 2 the count. Yeah, I don't think there is any way that Arietta is going to throw him a fastball here. A 2 2 breaking ball he held up. 
And I think he's going to get another one. Crowd starts to come alive a bit. Big crowd. 3 2 to Adams. In the dirt. So in this inning, Arietta has hit a man. That was Piscotti. Now the walk to Adams, and it brings up Dexter Fowler. Really a good at bat by Matt Adams, too. It's tough to, on a cold evening in April, to come out and pinch hit against one of the best pitchers in baseball. Good job. Runners at first and second. Fowler struck out looking back in the first, single to left in the fourth. Drops in a breaking ball for strike one. One thing Dexter Fowler has done to anybody that wants to listen is that he has said, I have completely turned the page on a year ago. You know, when he's asked about facing the Cubs. And he said, and quite honestly, they need to too. I'm in Cardinal Red. It's a great cha chapter of my life. I'll always be friends and brothers with these guys because of what we accomplished. But it's time to turn the page. Funny thing, you compare the two players, Jason Hayward and Dexter Fowler. Dexter Fowler will be cheered in Chicago. Jason Hayward was booed here in St. Louis. Sometimes he's booed in Chicago too. Well, that's true. Going to the count. Swing and a miss, and he strikes out Fowler for the second time tonight. Cardinals strand two, but they pick up a run. Piscotti hit by a pitch. That's the right elbow. There's the left elbow at second. And then the play at home. We'll see if he stays in this game. It's 2 1. Just 16 and older take home a Yadier Molina bobblehead courtesy of Ford. Limited number of the bobbleheads will feature gold or platinum gloves. And be sure to check out a life-size version of the Yadi bobblehead in the Ford Plaza. 
Tickets at Cardinals.com slash promotion. So as we thought, Matt Adams stays in the game and left, and Gritchick shifts to right. New pitcher is Matt Bowman. And there's strike one. Matt Bowman a year ago, 59 appearances for the former Rule 5 pickup as he came over from the Mets. It's our Chevy call to the pen. He was not scored upon this spring. Very good. And again, a, a great job by Adam Wainwright. Two runs in five innings against a tough offense. 18 of 22 first pitch strikes. That was your key, first pitch strikes. Yeah. Very important. 1-1 one, one is a high fly ball lifted out to left. This is Adams. He's got it and makes the play. Tonight on Fox Sports Midwest Plus, we'll have updates for you throughout the baseball game. But a reminder the hockey game taking place, the Jets and the Blues, and that's on Fox Sports Midwest Plus. There's certain times that you have to be fearless and intrepid. And I think Mike Matheny's doing that with, by putting Matt Adams in left field. You're behind, you need runs. He's a threat at the plate. May lose something defensively, but you can't do anything about Stephen Piscotti's injury. For those of you that just joined us, he was hit on the head trying to score a run, and he eventually did score. And it was a throw by Anthony Rizzo that caught him on the helmet after being hit by a pitch, then hit advancing at a ball that got away at second base, and then hit scoring the run. Yeah, hit three times on his trip around the bases. The 0 2 pitch to Contreras. Got him. And a strikeout for Bowman. Good changeup from Matt. He showed last year talking about fearless and intrepid. He is all of that. Good changeup. And it brings in Hayward. Picked up the first RBI in this game. Soft liner to left field that scored Addison Russell back in the fourth. 2 1 Cubs here in the top of the sixth. He's also grounded out to second and the 1 0 pitch. One thing about Bowman is he gives hitters a different look for the Cardinals out of the bullpen. He's got that unusual move. First base side of the rubber. Certainly helps his uh, change up. He's got one of the better. Change ups and. Derek knows that. Very good sinker a lot of ground balls. Mm -hmm. The 2 1. And Hayward hits a fly ball out to left, backing up Adams. Hey, the ball will find you. Nice work, Matt Adams. Nice work, Matt Bowman. 2 1 ball game.
green. The dimensions here at Bush Stadium. By the way, the the grass completely replaced, uh, resodded, and some of the drainage issues at the club it had, which weren't many, but it hadn't been updated for about 10 years or so. So after the Winter Classic, tore it up, and we have this beautiful field that we see tonight. A breaking ball, and it's low to Alette Miss Diaz, and we're underway in the home half of the sixth. 2 1 Chicago. Diaz, Carpenter, and Peralta against Jake Arietta. Hit left side. Bryant gets it on the short hop. And Alette Miss is 0 for 3. I remember we were in Wrigley Field and I said, Tim, why have the Cubs never won? And you told me plain and simple, they did not draft well, they did not develop players. They can't one say the that anymore. One of the worst farm systems yeah. in the game. We this saw this four but or five years ago we were talking about yeah. that. Theo Epstein, number one on the world's greatest leaders list, put out by Fortune magazine, ahead of the Pope. Mm, that might be a reach. Change the fortunes of the Boston Red Sox and now the Chicago Cubs. Said he couldn't even potty train his dog. <laughs> he did. He was being very humble, was Theo, about that. He said, I can't even teach my dog. To to scratch on the door when he wants to go outside. Well, then you can't be number one on that list. No, you wouldn't be be a dog's list. <laughs> <laughs> the O2 to Carpenter. It did make me think about those that have changed the, the fortunes of a franchise. And I know you knew him very well. I was thinking about Dallas Green with, you know, the Philadelphia Phillies. 1980 team certainly changed the, uh, the future of the Chicago Cubs organization after he did the, the Phillies the manager of the 1980 Phillies when they won their first World Series Dallas passed away in the last three weeks or so I hear it was just an absolutely beautiful service yeah. two and two the count on Carpenter with one out and nobody on. And Carpenter lifts a fly ball out to right on the move and making the play. Jason Hayward. Offense was down a year ago, but the Cubs raved about his defense. Uh, he's a gold glove right fielder for good reason. Good jump on this ball. And because he's a left handed thrower it's a much easier play gloves on the right hand for the Cubs. Now Johnny Peralta with two outs. Dallas Green was the head of the Cubs when they made the trade for Ryan Sandberg and he demanded Sandberg because he had signed him as a minor leaguer for the Phillies. Ryan Sandberg, the MVP in the National League in 1984. And wouldn't you know it, the Cubs get in the postseason. They won the first two games and then lose three in a row. And the ball going through Leon Durham's legs in San Diego. 0 2 pitch. A broken bat. Shallow center. Baez going out. And. Cannot come up with it. Had it and lost it, and it's a base hit for Peralta. That would have been on every highlight reel. Ooh. Even to make that close. This guy pointing less than an inch. Now he's going to look up and see how close it was. It was close, Javier. Brings in Molina, who has seen a total of two pitches tonight, routed out to third. And popped out to first. 
Molina 13th career opening day start tying him with Hall of Famers Ozzie Smith and Enos Slaughter third most in Cardinals history. Usual with 21 Brock with 15. Kia in the driver's seat concerning Yadier Molina. Most consecutive starts opening day. These are catchers. He's closing in on history. Big gap in left center for Yadier Molina. Almost to the backstop again, and now Contreras calls time. Molina now in his 14th season with the Cardinals. Only three players currently with their teams for a 14th season. Molina, Joe Maurer of the Twins, David Wright of the Mets. Long time ago he replaced that man there, Mike Matheny. If he makes it to the Hall of Fame, he'd be the third Cardinal to spend his entire career with St. Louis. Stan the man and Bob Gibson. The 2 0 pitch. Up the middle. Russell to his left. Can't come up with it. Peralta stops in second. So it's back to back hits. With two outs, the Cardinals have matched their hit total. And speaking of the Hall of Fame, the vote for this year's Cardinals Hall of Fame presented by Edward Jones. It's underway. Jason Isringhausen, Scott Rowland, Mark McGuire, my partner Tim McCarver, Keith Hernandez, Steve Carlton, Edgar Renteria. Only two will be inducted. It's up to Cardinals Nation to decide. Vote now at Cardinals.com slash HOF. I couldn't believe it. I walked in the booth about three o'clock and you're on the computer trying to stuff the ballot for yourself. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell anybody <laughs> that. <laughs> Greg Garcia will be the pitch hitter. We talked about how Arietta can dominate, get one through nine, and he's done that against the Cardinals and so many other teams. Four starts against the Redbirds last year. He failed to make it through six in three of those starts. He did, though, go three and one against St. Louis. Nobody up for the Cubs in their bullpen. And I'll tell you, Arietta's got his hands full with a tough pinch hitter in Greg Garcia. The breaking ball in the dirt again. One wild pitch, costly. For the Cubs, allowing Piscotti to go to second. He eventually scored on an infield hit and an error by Anthony Rizzo. Very shallow in the outfield, big, uh, big gap in right center. So if you're the runner on a second base, you've got to cheat off the bag. The 1 0. And Johnny Peralta, nobody knows his speed better than him. You've got to take a chance somewhere. Greg was very good in this spot a year ago. 348 is average in the pitch. The 1 1. In the dirt, runners advance. And what you're talking about, Tim, now comes into play with a runner at third potentially in that tying run. That's the second wild pitch, and both have been costly. Now the big thing Dan and we talked about it if you're Garcia look for the fastball because a young catcher like Contreras I mean there have already been two balls that have gotten by him you don't want another another one to get by because that would be a tie ball game so look for the fastball the two one pitch to Garcia got a breaking ball. Wild pitches a year ago, Arietta was 16 to lead the National League. Word on Piscotti, head contusion, reevaluated tomorrow morning. We'll have a day game for you here at Bush Stadium. 
two balls two strikes base hit could put the Cardinals on top. So as you were talking about Peralta when he was at second scene could be said now for Yadier Molina. Sure. Outfield fairly shallow. Yeah base hit to the outfield the only play is going to be on Molina trying to score. Justin Grimm starts to throw in the Cubs pen. Three two pitch. Bases loaded. Tough at bat isn't he. I'm telling you. He will not swing at a ball. It's tough enough when you have four plate appearances, but when you come off the bench, these pitches are very, very close. Another breaking ball from Marietta. Good at bat by Greg Garcia, but that's redundant. It's a two out rally. It's a base hit off the glove of Baez into shallow center by Peralta. Molina, the single to center. Walk to. Garcia and now Randall Grichik who does own one grand slam in his career. First pitch to Grichik. He's over two tonight he has struck out and also fly to center. Shade him to right center and big deep. gap and left. Yeah and deep. Got to respect his power. Home run to right field in game one. The 0 1. Jammed him. Popped up on the infield. Russell wants it. He's got it. And the threat is through. Arietta strands the bases loaded. Good ball game tonight. We head to inning number seven. fans back to our telecast and that includes Sandy Peck who's watching tonight make sure and get a free small fry and medium frozen coke when you purchase any Big Mac sandwich every day during Cardinals opening week this is the Cardinal debut of Brett Cecil in our Chevy call to the pen signed a four year deal in the offseason. He was a starter in the Toronto Blue Jays organization then moved to their pen. And when right a very good breaking ball we saw that at times in spring he was supposed to pitch for Team USA in the World Baseball Classic. Wanted to dedicate a little bit more time to. 
his new team, new teammates. Good change up right there. Ball he turned over to Javier Baez. You know, Cecil only one in seven last year in 54 appearances, but an aberration coming out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Cardinals lost Zach Duke to Tommy John and immediately jumped on Cecil. Mm -hmm. See general managers like John Mozalak, I'll tell you, when a left handed reliever becomes available, their eyes light up. Yeah. Left handers can do more with less than right handers. One two pitch and a strikeout of Baez. That looked like a change up, but it could have been just a hard turnover. Good location to Baez. Watch this pitch. Ball going away and down. Good pitch from Cecil. I always find it interesting career paths too in baseball over a, an extended period of time. You know, here's a guy that was a top pick by Toronto. It just doesn't work out as a, a starter, but he finds a home and a role that fits him mm -hmm. in the bullpen. And here he is, one of the better lefties in the game now. Uh, one of the great hitters that I've ever been around, uh, Pete Rose. Matt Caesar, the pinch hitter, pops it up, foul territory. There's Yachty, two down. Caesar pinch hitting and popping out. Pete Rose could not hit Randy Jones of the Padres with a boat paddle. I mean, he just could not hit him. And every time he'd come back to the dugout, the only, only year I played with Pete was 1979, my final full year. And he would scream at Randy Jones, if you were a right hander, they wouldn't have signed you. <laughs> and I said, Pete, this guy won a Cy Young Award. And then he then he about tore my head off. <laughs> I don't care what he's done. This guy can't get anybody out but me. <laughs> and then he'd laugh. <laughs> Was there a better competitor you were around no, than Pete Rose? No. New. No. Nope. It's like there were two of them all the time. Is that right? He was relentless. All one pitch. Albert Almora. So the Cardinals will get into the bullpen of the Cubs. Joe Madden will ask his bullpen to get the final nine outs. Try to hold this 2 1 lead. Their bullpen is not as strong as it was last year because of a rollless Chapman who signed with the Yankees. And I don't care how much money the Cubs would have dangled in front of Chapman, the Yankees were going to top him. And he wanted to go back too. He That's right. See, you know. Oh yeah, they knew that too. They parted on very good terms. Yeah. Last year when he was traded to the Cubs, and Chapman's a Yankee now. Just missed inside. Chapman was a little frustrated. Did make those comments public about how he was handled. Yeah. By Joe Madden. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any baseball fan or anybody who covered the covers the sport. Wong was going to his right, and a base hit into right field. Check the signage. Remember the other night with Javi Baez, similar type play. Major League Baseball, if you're wondering, was going to address uh, address the signage behind home plate, which was white, the other night, and. Baez said he never picked up the ball and it looked like Wong broke the wrong way. It, it looked like the same thing happened to Colton. Yeah, that's a ball Colton Wong normally just sucks up. Now it's Schwarber, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And he's also walked. That's a move that you can get away with in the American League, but that's close to a balk right there. National League umpires are more inclined to call that move a balk than American League umpires. Can't deceive the runner, and that right foot becomes very, very close to coming behind that that right leg 
There's a delivery of Cecil in the Hyundai pitch arsenal, what he features. Two outs and a runner at first, the 1 0. It was interesting how Mike Matheny played late innings in game one. As he went with Sun Wan Oh for nearly 40 pitches, he had Cecil ready to go against a Schwarber, but went with O. Oh. Yeah. A move that eventually paid off. Yeah, but any Cardinal fan knows that O's going to have problems with left handed batters. He doesn't have a consistent pitch. To, to get left handed batters out. That's why, you know, Trevor Rosenthal needs to get ready and needs to get healthy. Two and one the count. Can't just depend. The Cardinals bullpen is not strong enough to depend on one guy. Schwarber with a fly ball out to left. Backing up Adams, and he makes the catch. And a little smile from Matt Adams. <laughs> Time to stretch. It's 2 1. You can smile if you catch it. Yeah. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. Chevy called to the pen. Koji Uehara signed a one year deal with the Cubs for $6 million. Just turned 42. Yesterday, right? Yep. Boston made an attempt to bring him back, pitch for the Red Sox. When that did not work out, they went and got Tyler Thornburg. Uihara from Japan. He's pitched with Baltimore, Texas, Boston, and now the Cubs. And you may recall he was the NLCS MVP in 2013 and recorded the final out of the World Series against the Cardinals had at two, Fenway Park. Had two saves in five appearances for the Red Sox against the Cardinals in 2013. He'll throw one splitter after another. This guy's amazing. He throws them from any arm angle. Drops his arm down. Very deceptive pitcher. And it was Uihara that picked off Colt Wong to end oh. one of the games in the Fall Classic. Here at Bush Stadium. That's right. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Jake Arietta goes six innings tonight. He allows four hits. 
one run struck out six. Koji Urahara has 93 major league saves. 93. Did it mostly in his late 30s with the Red Sox. And doing it without the the prototypical 95 to 100 <laughs> right, fastball, right. you know, that you think yeah. about with a closer. One dazzler after another. Three and one the count. Now if you're Colton, you try to sit on a fastball here and try to tie this game up. Situational hitting. He got it and popped it up on the infield again. Baez puts it away for the first out. So one away here in the bottom of the seventh. Stub up is your ticket to once in a lifetime experiences Cardinal games to amazing concerts to shows you just don't want to miss stub up connects you with the world of live stub up your ticket out stub up the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. Here's Adams who's had three fly balls hit to him and left and handled all three. In the spot that was occupied by Wainwright. Used as a pinch hitter back in the fifth, drew a walk. And the 0 1. Just joined us, Stephen Piscotti, span of about five minutes, hit by a pitch, the right elbow, then at second base, advancing in a ball that got away, hit on the left elbow. And then on an infield hit by Colt Wong, rounded third, came in to score, and a throw by Rizzo hit him in the helmet. Two balls, one strike. Just get a look there at David Bell on the left. Adams with a fly ball out to center. Almora is back. He is at the wall. It is caught. He takes the home run away and keeps it a one run Chicago lead. Remember earlier in the game when Addison Russell went after that ball near the stands and we talked about how you got to find the wall's not going to move so you get to the wall and back off if necessary. Almora gets to the wall jumps and that ball would have been out. I think it would have hit the top of the fence. And gone out. What a break for the Cubs and a fine play by Almora Jr. Two yes. outs and now Fowler. Dan, we saw a ball hit by Cal Schwarber earlier that we said would have been a home run in the warmer months. That ball's way out of here in the summer, of course. It's April. Good play by Almora. Gnashing of teeth by Matt Adams. Gosh. Fowler one for three tonight. Nothing at two. It's got to be the first at bat. From Fowler against Uhara. My knowledge he's never faced it. it. Strikes out Fowler, three K's for Dexter tonight. Almora, great catch in center and robs Matt Adams of what would be a game tying home run. Instead, it's 2 1 Chicago.
as he takes a home run away from Matt Adams to keep this 2 1. Now Chris Bryant to face Kevin Segrist as we start play here in the top of the eighth. Bryant Rizzo and Russell top three have been held in check in this lineup tonight collectively 0 for 9 with a walk and that's Schwarber Bryant and Rizzo Chris Bryant uh, hit hitless on the young season 0 for 7 with four strikeouts. And the two always popped up. Foul territory. Carpenter's there, so is Wong, and he makes the catch. Big league pop up right there. Cardinal fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go. Download the app. And take Fox Sports Midwest and Cardinals baseball with you wherever you go. Along with Tim McCarver, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Post game show coming up with Rick Horton and Scott Warman. Sometimes, yep. sometimes as a, an infielder, you get too far under that ball. That ball, had he missed it, it would almost have been fair. Very close. Not quite, but it was close. Yeah. Now Rizzo 0 for 3. Fastball in there for a strike. The Cardinals deliberately held Segrist back early in spring, taking a look at his workload the last three years. Tons of appearances for Segrist. So they pulled him back a little bit, tried to lighten that workload and get him ready for the regular season as Rizzo is hit by the pitch. Well, Piscotti was hit earlier, and now Rizzo. Yeah, but no, no, no way, no way. Is this any kind of retaliation? In my view, I mean that's a that's a ball that Anthony Rizzo's been used to. I mean he gets hit 20, 22 or three times a year. 16 times last year, fifth most in baseball. Yeah, I mean you stand on top of the plate, you got to expect to get hit occasionally, and he gets hit more than occasionally. Madison Russell on the first pitch pops it up. Wong is over near the line. This time stays on his feet. <laughs> Don't overrun it. Two outs and it brings in Contreras here at the top of the eighth. Over two with a walk and a run scored. No activity in the Cubs pen. They did have Justin Grimm up at one point. To put it in perspective, Tim, for the first time in 39,435 days, the Cubs opened the season as the World Series champs. Just 14 days after the construction began on the Titanic, April 14th, 1909. In 1908, there were 144 miles of paved road in this country. 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 8% of the homes in America, 8% had telephones. We're not talking about cell phones, we're talking about phones. Alexander <laughs> Graham Bell phones. <laughs> The 2 0. Breaks his bat, but picks up a base hit into left. Rizzo stopping at second base. It is, One thing uh, to it keep is in a mind. remarkable span. Oh, it's of time. ridiculous. Yeah, Looking really back is. at some of the things that were there. Yeah. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. 
you know one thing to keep in mind if you're the Cubs and Matt Adams in left field you're running all day. Right. You would have to assume. Uh, of course. So Rizzo is your runner at second base and now it's Jason Hayward who got the Cubs on the board back in the fourth. Little flare to shallow left. Ground ball slowly hit to second. Colton Wong. Cup strand two. Scoreless inning by Segrist. Coming up for the Cardinals, two, three, and four in the lineup. Aledmus Diaz, Matt Carpenter, Johnny Peralta in a 2-1 game. at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Good ball game here tonight. The BJC Healthcare Difference Maker. Slowly but surely, the Cubs building on those draft picks. Gutted really the everyday lineup and franchise. They had 56 player transactions, spent nearly $500 million in free agency, developed their farm system, all came together, and they won the World Series a year ago. And Pedro Stroke was a member of that team. And gave up the two run home run to Randall Gritchick on an 0 2 fastball right down the heart of the plate in game one. So looking to redeem himself tonight. He's got a tough part of the lineup with Diaz, Carpenter, and Peralta coming up. You know, we talk about Brock for Brolio, one of the great steals in Cardinals history, a steal for the Cubs on the other side. Jake Arietta, Pedro Stroke from Baltimore. Oh man. Steve Clevenger, Steve I think Clevenger. A, a catcher was one of those, and there was a right-handed pitcher, I believe. Hey, think about that. Yeah. Gosh. And a fastball taken high by Aledmis Diaz. 0 for 3 tonight. He struck out, grounded out to first, flied out to right. The 1 0. Strope originally signed by the Rockies as a shortstop in 2002. Played in their minor league system as a shortstop for three years, then moved to the mound. Eventually released, signed with Texas, and that's where he made his major league debut in 2009. And Diaz with a fly ball out to left. The first of six Academy Sports and Outdoors autograph nights is Friday. Two current players will sign autographs for fans 15 and under in the Ford Plaza from 545 
to 615. Two former Cardinals will sign for fans of all ages. 615 to 7. For details, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. Question for you would be this. You've got, if you're Joe Madden, Kyle Schwarber is due up fourth in their lineup. At what point do you think in games late does he double switch or maybe just straight switch him out for defensive purposes late in games? Now, I don't know that he's willing to do that right now. I think he considers Kyle Schwarber a better fielder than a lot of people do. That, that would be my take. Just something to think about. Uh, uh, well, you got John Jay if you wanted to do that. I'm not sure John Jay's better as an outfielder than Schwarber. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Carpenter 0 for 3 tonight. The arm's no problem. I mean, you know, John is not, does not have a, a strong arm. But I think Cal Schwarber it, has shown the Cubs enough to be a guy that you wouldn't think about doing that to. Cardinals tonight with just four hits, Chicago with five. And the 2 0 pitch in the dirt. Now you put Tommy LaStella out there, he's probably a, a better fielder. Ben Zobra, certainly a guy that you could think about doing that with. I mean, he's got a lot of a lot of cards to play. Meanwhile, the Cardinals need some base runners to play by Almora in center field, taking a home run away, a game tying home run in the seventh. Three and one the count. Johnny Peralta on deck. <laughs> Scott Feldman, the pitcher. Yeah, that was it. From the Orioles. For Arietta, Steve Clevenger, a catcher, and Scott Feldman, a pitcher. Three two pitch, spoiled by Carpenter. Six innings by Arietta. Scoreless seventh by Uihara. And it's Pedro Strope here in the eighth. Three two. We'll do it again. Everything stroke throws is hard. Fastball slider. No change ups, no nothing. So if you're a hitter, you can zero in on either fastball or slider, something hard. Slider is the the hardest off speed pitch. Get a good look at it here. Three two pitch. There it was. That struck 80, him out. Eighty three mile an hour uh, slider, but you got to remember that ball is going down and biting hard. Get a better look at it from right here. This is nasty. You get Carpenter. Look at our Chevy Fox track. So two down. And here's Johnny Peralta. Cardinals got a two out rally back in the six and could not score. It started with Peralta with a soft liner to center, then a base hit by Molina, walked to the pinch hitter Garcia, and then Grichik popped out with the bases loaded and the threat was through. Two outs, nobody on, and a 2 1 Chicago lead. 
2 and 0. Oh. Jonathan Broxton starts to throw in the Cardinals pen. Peralta hits it to third. Chris Bryan is there. And a one, two, three for Pedro Strope. Sends us to the ninth. The Cubs here in game two of this series have the lead. It's 2-1. Lewis, 32 year old. A reminder that we have our Budweiser What's on Tap Day Baseball tomorrow. John Lackey and Lance Lynn. The Cubs and Cardinals tomorrow will come your way at noon right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Jonathan, been around a long time from Augusta, Georgia. One thing Jonathan is trying to improve on is strike one, strike two when he comes in the game. Last year fell into I wouldn't say it was a habit but walking the first hitter that he faced good to see him throw strike one tonight. Bullpen very good here tonight for the Cardinals. Javi Baez at the plate. No balls two strikes Matt Bowman a scoreless sixth Cecil the seventh Segrist the eighth. And now Jonathan Broxton. The 0 2. Out to center. Well hit. Fowler back. He's got it. Up against the wall. Center fielders for both teams tonight have seen the track as much as the Clydesdales did <laughs> on Sunday night. <laughs> Another fine play. And then you remember Almora Jr. And that was, I don't know if it was a game saver, but it was a game tying savior back in the seventh on a ball hit by Matt Adams. 
Switch inning Ben Zobrist. He has been on back to back World Series champions. Kansas City Royals two years ago, the Cubs last year. Spring, he dealt with a nagging neck injury, missed some time. He's in year two of a four year contract. Very valuable player, as he has proven to be. World Series champion with the Royals, and then the next year, the Cubs. This guy's a winner, always was. Played for Joe Madden down in Tampa Bay. The 2 0 pitch by Broxton. You know, Dan, your question of an inning ago may be answered too if Schwarber hits in this inning. Because what Joe Maddell will do is leave Zobrist in the game to play defense unless he believes that Schwarber is as good an outfielder. So we'll see. The 2 0. Rather, 3 0, and that's ball four. So Zobrist, a one out walk. Ben drew 96 walks a year ago. RBI Baseball 2017 returns with fast paced. Pick up and play MLB action packed with all your favorite MLB teams, players, ballparks, and much more. Get RBI Baseball today for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and mobile devices. Learn more at RBIGame.com. Right now, the play of the game is Al Moore and his catch at center. And here he is at the play with one out. Ben Zobris from Eureka, Illinois. That's about 120 miles southwest of Chicago, 180 miles northeast of St. Louis. He said some family and friends were happy, others didn't like it when he signed with the Cubs. It's that dividing line in that area up there in Eureka or near Eureka. Pitch out, none doing. Now five straight balls thrown by Broxton. Got to hear Molina guessing pitch out or guessing hit and run on that pitch out. Nothing doing for the Cubs. Gets the bunt down. And Peralta makes the play. Set for the season with your new Cardinals gear. Friday, April 7th, 30,000 fans ages 16 and older receive a lightweight hooded pullover courtesy of AT&T. And get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. I put Schwarber on here and pitched to Bryant. I wouldn't mess with him. I mean, how many times do you see with one out a sacrifice bunt in the ninth inning of a one run ball right. game. He's thinking the and same that's thing. What Ma that's what Madden just did. As far as the Cubs are concerned, they hope that Schwarber will get the bat. But if they don't, Chris Bryant, but Chris Bryant's 0 for 8 on the young season. So I think you got to walk him here, don't you? Don't don't let me well, hang I, out I'm thinking here. about it too. How many times do you say let's walk him to get to the reigning MVP. <laughs> He's 0 for 8. I know. I don't like this matchup. That first pitch many times gives away what you might be doing. Mm. You know you may see Mike Matheny just put up the four and then they walk him and have the new intentional walk. If he falls behind 2 and 0. Oh. That defeats the spirit of the new intentional walk, however. <laughs> Going way inside, and it's now 2 0. Oh. See Molina looking in. We're walking him. What are we doing? There it is. So 2 0. Oh. That sign of 2 went up. And there it is <laughs> the intentional walk.
So runners at first and second and the Cardinals will deal with Chris Bryant. Bryant tonight fly to center fly to right struck out looking and popped out to second 0 for 4. First pitch to him. Ground ball left side. And the move pays off. So we head to the bottom of the ninth. A 2 1 game. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light, famous among friends. And by T-Mobile. Only T-Mobile lets you stream, post, and share all things MLB. With T-Mobile One, Unlimited data means unlimited baseball. So here we go. New closer for the Cubs is Wade Davis. Ben Zobra stays in the game, takes over for Kyle Schwarber in left field. Our crowd tonight, 46,760. It's a sellout. And Davis is our Chevy call to the pen. Jose Martinez has moved to the on deck circle. First pitch is hit out of play. Wade Davis picked up by the Cubs in exchange for Jorge Soler, who was under team control through 2020, so very attractive to Kansas City. Soler on the disabled list for the Royals, however. I think he has an oblique strain or something like that. Yeah. They've got Lorenzo Kane, Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustakis, Alcides Escobar all coming up for free agency. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Yadier Molina. Wade Davis moved to the bullpen full time in 2014. He came to Kansas City from Tampa Bay. Features a fastball cutter and a curve. One of the concerns for the Cubs when they made this deal is that Davis was on the disabled list twice last year with a forearm issue. 
and Major League Baseball gave the Cubs permission to take an additional exam of his arm before making that deal and they were comfortable with it and here he is. The one one. Molina guides it to right and it's there with Rizzo. Some managers would have preferred to have guarded the line on the right side with Molina batting. Joe Madden says that's to that. Rizzo doesn't make that play if he's on the line. No question. So here is Jose Martinez. You know, the more you see Jose Martinez, oh. I mean, the better he becomes. Yes. The good player. You know, take what you will from spring training, and I was down there sure. and saw just about sure. every game. Mm -hmm. He had the best spring, I think, of anybody. Mm -hmm. The numbers mm -hmm. show that, but the ball jumps off his bat. Yeah. Quick, Scored, quick bat. Scored the winning run in game one. <laughs> And the kind of player in Major League Baseball you pull for so many years oh, in the yeah. minor leagues. One point independent baseball. I thought he had tears in his eyes on opening day when he was introduced and he told us later that family and friends were watching in his native Venezuela. One ball one strike. They shade him to the opposite field. Yeah, with Davis pitching, right hander to right hander. Plus, the double he hit the other night was to right center field, right. also. That defense that Dan was talking about, everything's on the center field, but where's the center field? He's to the right of second base. But that, that is literally a shade to right. The 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Randall Gritchick on deck. And again, Contreras out to visit. This will primarily be the role for Martinez, barring injuries. You know, he's going to come off the bench, give you that pop. He can play first base. And has added that to his resume. Or Natural maybe, outfielder. Maybe uh, against a left handed pitcher. Sure. Uh, in left field, if Piscotti's down for any length of time. Yeah, perhaps. Or even maybe against the right hand instead of going with, with Adams. Mike Matheny does have some choices in that regard. The 3 1 pitch. The tying run is aboard. The winning run comes to the plate in the form of Randall Gritchick. The other thing to keep in mind, Martinez is six foot seven. But you know, you think of guys that tall, then maybe they lumber, they're not quick. No. He can run. Well, he can run. He's like we just saw a Final Four with North Carolina last night. They had some guys who were tall and can run. Yes, well, they can. You're looking at a guy who's tall and can run in your picture right there. That's Jose. Good That's play. ball one. Good play by Contreras. Smothering that uh, slider. Laza tires and Fox tracks. Another look at Contreras. Boy, that is a good play. Yeah, that's a, that's a ball that hit in front of home plate. Almost hit the edge of the plate. Isn't that something? 58 mm -hmm. straight innings without allowing a home run. Wow. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Grigic. Oof. Oof. He's going to get that for the rest of this at bat. You got to figure. They've seen what Gritchie could do to a fastball. He had a two run home run off stroke on an 0 2 pitch, and then he won the game for the Cardinals on a fastball from the left handed. No doubles defense for the outfield. The 1 1 to Rando Gritchick. 
One and two. The Cardinals all told tonight just four hits. The one two pitch. Fly ball. Right field. They were near the stands reaching in and out of play. It was a tight ball game, the opener on Sunday. And another one here on this Tuesday night. It's been fun. Sure has. Away with the slider. Ground ball left side. Bryant to second. The turn, no turn. And they do get the lead man in Martinez. So two down. And the final hope for the Cardinals, Colton Wong. Hit just slow enough not to get two. Mm -hmm. Off the end of the bat, really. Away from that sweet spot. Wade Davis can do that to any good right handed batter. Tough on right handers. Two outs. Tying run at first. That's Grichik. Long right side. Diving stop. And. He is out and immediately Mike Matheny will call and ask for the challenge. He's got nothing to lose in this spot. I thought he was safe. But we shall see. Unlike Brian Price who waited too long you have 10 seconds to come out and say that I want to challenge the play. Well the one thing Gritchick's got to do is touch second base. The center fielder came in, took the ball, even though I think time is out. But Gritchick's got to go to second base. Boy, it's close. Sure is. Momentary bobble by Baez. Wow. I don't know. He's out. Ball is in the mitt before the toes came down. That last shot. That's the way I saw it. It has to, if it can be shown, hit Court. the back of the mitt. Of course, it in the first baseman's mitt is the longest exactly. mitt of any glove defensively. So we had a play like this end of last season. Brian Price never came out and challenged. The manager has 10 seconds. At the end of the game. Yeah, I remember that. Sure. And so immediately yeah. Mike Matheny hopped right out of the dugout and he's got nothing to lose in this spot. Nothing. Out at first and the game is over. Yeah, I thought he had it. So Mike Matheny had nothing to lose in challenging and the Cubs hold on for a 2 1 win over St. Louis. Good, good ball game here tonight. Jake Arietta is our Budweiser player of the game six innings as he picks up his first win in 2017. The difference in this game. Albert Almora Junior. On a drive by Matt Adams. Takes a home run away. That would have tied it. Instead it stayed 2 1 and that's the final tonight.